This MacBook Air M1 is no doubt one of the best laptops out there. After one month of usage, it's getting clear why people are so interested on this laptop even though it's already 2024 and it was released back in 2020. So let's see what has changed and figure out why this MacBook Air M1 stands out. So what we have here is the most popular one, MacBook Air M1 with M1 Apple Silicon chip with 8-core CPU and 7-core GPU. This also has 8 gigs of unified memory and 256 gigs of storage. And this is currently priced on 999 US dollars, but you can get this most of the time for 820. And I'm telling you, it's a deal that is hard to pass on. Let's talk about performance. Battery life is one of the most insane things about this MacBook Air M1. The official info they claim is it has 16 hours of battery life. And that's true, I backed that up with my previous experience on the first time that I've used it. From 93% on the day that I've unboxed, charged, set up, and did a lot of things for the first time, the next day on that same time, it still has 48% of battery life. But to give you a more accurate real-life working result, it has 8 hours of battery life while doing heavy workloads like 4K editing on Final Cut Pro. But we can put this on 6 hours as minimum as this is also a multitasking activity because while doing that, my other apps like Notion, Google Chrome, and Apple Notes are open. You don't get that kind of performance on most laptops out there. For normal workloads like watching videos and browsing, it lasts maximum of 16 hours but this really varies a lot could be less or could be more, especially if you're going on idle mode from time to time. This is really good performance, you know, because with all of that, you won't experience any decreased performance while on battery mode. This means you are not tied to a power outlet and you get the full max performance of your laptop even on battery mode. So basically, you can just charge this once per day and you're good to go. That's a clear indication why this MacBook Air M1 is really good. It touches the real definition of portability. It's not just about the freedom from charging it all the time. It's not just about how you can physically carry it easily everywhere, but it's also about the amount of tasks you can perform with its battery life. As you may guess it, yeah, I'm a hardcore user. I don't care if it's just an 8 gig unified memory laptop, but actually that's what makes this laptop promising. It's insane performance for multitasking. This MacBook Air M1 will skyrocket your productivity. It has command key functions and trackpad gestures, and they're on a different level. They are literally functional and makes everything easier. Plus, if you have access to Apple ecosystem, you can even copy and paste text across your Apple devices. You can use your iPad as extended, separate, or mirror display of your laptop. And with just one month of having this MacBook Air M1, I completely changed and 99% of the time, everything is smooth. And this might be debatable, but I'll say it. The 8 gig unified memory feels just like 16 gigs of RAM. Wait, before you lash out things in the comment section, in terms of general use, it does really feel like that, from its interface animation to hovering around different workspaces. But there are things that pulls it back to its boundary and reminds me that it's just an 8 gig unified memory laptop. Example, on Final Cut Pro, this can handle 4K video editing without any major rendering problem. You don't even need to change the playback quality as long as your project rendering settings is not overwhelming. But there was a time that I need to add a lot of sliding effects, which is not reasonable in the first place, but I had to do it for my new Ace Stuff every team gaming test video. Maybe around 4 to 6 a slide in and slide out effects consecutively, and there are two problems that emerge here. One is it fails when getting exported, which is a super bad result for me because I would take a longer export time that's more acceptable than failure to export a video file just because it can't handle the effects. And the other one which I really can't do anything is it exports with some unfixable frame freeze. And that's where this MacBook Air M1 draw its line and reminded me that despite its smooth performance on almost everything that feels like 16 gigs of RAM, that it's just an 8 gig unified memory laptop. But on the positive side, with my full standard workflow scale, the highest swap memory use I've seen on resource monitor while editing with multitasking is just around 2 gig. And yeah, obvious as it seems, I'm overusing it. And you might be curious about its current build quality as I use it both indoors and outdoors. Everything is sturdy. But I discovered a problem on the one of the most important parts of this laptop, which is the hinge. Just to be clear, it's good quality as well and I don't see myself in the future having some kind of hinge problems. But 
the problem that I encountered here is regarding on how it withstands wind power. 50% of the time, I'm using this outdoors and this struggles protecting itself from wind force. It does really get wobbly and really concerning. To be honest, it's actually terrible because comparing it to my a stuff A15, which is supposed to be the one that has some problematic hinge issue as stated by other a stuff F15 owners, but on my end, it's actually opposite. Asus Top F15 has no issues at all and you don't have to worry about it, but this MacBook Air M1 is the one that has a huge risk on potential issues on its hinge durability. But moving on, on much more performance related side, the thermals are great even while editing. And the good thing here is I don't have an exact number for the temperatures because it was never concerning in the first place. And with that being said, I had no issues with thermal throttling, which is odd because some users does. I never got any noticeable performance decrease or some interrupting problem on my workflow due to thermals. Even while exporting heavy 4K videos, I even watch and browse things while my projects are being exported, so everything is fine. The thermals gets warm but barely hot, unlike Windows gaming laptops that you might mistakenly think that there's a fire department inside your laptop. But you know, despite being satisfied, there are some setbacks or disappointing issues that is really inevitable and it gets me every day. This two USB-C port is quite a problem and I only realized that after one month of usage. Transfer speeds are fine, power delivery is fine, and I do use a 8-in-1 hub as well, but it's not enough. Maybe it's because half of my gears are still on USB-A, or maybe it's because of just how this laptop is. Two USB-C ports and one audio jack. I don't know, this just feels lagging so much, and I think that's normal. Especially about this whole compatibility restriction of Apple to isolate its product. You know, time to time, I still find myself to come back to my A stuff F15 for a few work-related stuff on specific apps. But that's just fine because I haven't fully integrated my apps yet on this MacBook Air M1 and that would really take a while including adjusting myself as well. And you know, the main difference here from Windows laptop is gaming as well. To be clear, this can also play games, done it for a few times but not as good as much as Windows gaming laptops. And personally, I don't recommend it. And you know, prior on getting this, I don't really have any gaming intention on this MacBook Air M1. But yeah, if we remove gaming in that equation and focus on its overall performance, I can definitely say that after one month of having this MacBook Air M1, the money that I invested on this is really worth it. It's amazing in its own coverage, and if we compare this to other laptops on this price range, this would effortlessly stand out and prove that this MacBook Air M1 is one of the top tier laptops that have been made. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe. It would really help me a lot. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to comment down below. You can contact me through my socials. And yeah, again, Kermis here. Thanks for watching and catch you guys on the next one.